Hey, this is Will and Rob from Chill House Studios. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Today we're going to do a little exploration into tape versus digital and, and recording drums. So Rob came with a question. He said, man, what's the difference in recording drums to tape as to digital? And so we thought, well, let's just do it, show everybody what's up, and uh, see what we find out. So what we're going to do today is Rob's going to kick a groove. I'm going to record it digitally first into Pro Tools. Um, and then we're going to reset and I'm going to record it onto a tape, a two inch. So we're running a Studer A80 with a, a two inch machine with some 900 uh, tape stock. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun, really interesting to see what the differences are. Okay, so I think I got everything. So whenever you're ready, Rob, why don't you give us a groove? I think that uh, digital gives you what it gives you back what you give it. I don't think it really imparts character to the signal. So kind of whatever it receives is what it gives back, um, which is you know great, which is fine. And I think when we get to the tape side, you'll notice that it doesn't give you back exactly what you gave it. It, it has its own kind of sound that it imparts, and I can kind of explain sort of why I think that is. Okay, cool. So why don't you come in and we'll repatch things and we'll do the same thing, but we'll do it on tape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repatch so that the, so that the drum information, the, the music is hitting the tape. I had had it just going straight to the computer. Yeah. So all we're doing is we're just, we're directing all the outputs of all the mic pre's to go to the tape machine. Um, instead of the computer. So there it is going to the there it is going to the tape machine and then this is going to be it. And actually, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to move everything over one. And the reason for that is we're going to give the there's a certain amount of print through that happens on tape which means that whatever's on one channel especially if it's recorded loudly, it ends up a little bit bleeding onto the next channel because the tape, you know, the, it, to fit 24 channels onto this two inch tape, it's pretty narrow, narrow bandwidth, narrow channel bandwidth. So I usually don't put my kick on channel one if I don't have to, I put it on two. So I'm just patching back into the computer. So I'm rewinding the tape because I stored the tape, um, what's called tails out, which means that the ending of the tape is on the outside of the reel and the beginning of the tape is on the inside of the reel. And people do that because it protects, you know, usually if you don't, you know, your material is more likely to be at the beginning of the tape than at the end. So it protects the beginning material because it's in the middle of the tape uh, reel. This is about halfway through the tape, so if I play it, I believe there's gonna there's drums from an old session on this. But we're gonna go ahead and rewind, and we're actually gonna <clears throat> record over some of that because um, I don't even remember what was on what channel. Yeah, this is a this is a Studer A80. It was made in the mid 1980s, I think 1986. This is a Mark IV, so it was the last uh, version of the the A80 before they went to the A800. 
And then the final Studer tape machine was the 827. So um, this would have been, you know, state of the art in like the mid 1980s. It's a pro level tape deck. These are all the channels. There's 16 channels up top and then there are another eight down below. And so basically you're see, this is, this is where you do the calibration. Um, and then the metering is showing, uh, it'll show his signal coming in. And then when we play it back, it'll show the signals as being played back out. This machine right now is calibrated to plus six. So that means at zero dB, it's actually plus six. So it's, you know, kind of a hotter calibration. So you don't really need to um, get in the red on this one. You kind of keep it around zero because you're already at six above. Um, and other than that, you know, I've got it set up for 900 or 911 tape stock, um, which is what most people use. That was kind of the, the tape stock that was uh, the final formulation as far as technology and so forth. So I'm almost to the end of my reel. I believe if I play it, there's nothing on it here. So. Um, I could, I could just, usually you start recording about a minute in just to, so you're not right at the edge. I'll, I'll start about 45 seconds in. So then what we're going to do is we're going to have Rob go play and I'm going to hit record on the, the machine and we're going to have him do just what he just did and, and we'll see what the differences are. Cool. cool. So what you'll notice is I'm actually not going to run the computer right now. I'm just going to record it onto the tape itself. And then we might listen back off the tape, but then at some point I might, I'll, I'll dump it into the computer. Um, so there he is. Cool, beautiful. Come on in, we'll check it out. Hear the hiss, the tape hiss. This isn't a brand new tape. Kick's working now. So we're listening to it off the repro head. Um, you could also listen to it off the sync head, which is a different head. You heard it speed up a little. The difference is that um, you have two playback heads on a tape machine. The sync head is used so that you can overdub on it. So that when you have recorded material and you want to add a vocal or a guitar or something, obviously it has to be in sync. So the sync head um, allows you to hear the pre-recorded material in real time and actually, you know, put more material on top of it. The repro head does not. There, there's a delay between the repro head and the input head. So the repro head is typically used for mixing so that you don't need to be recording anymore. Um, and then the sync head is used when you're recording, although you can mix off either head. But the reason that, you know, they have the two heads is so that you don't put all the wear on one head. You kind of spread your wear out between the two. But as a result, the sync head and the repro head can, they're not supposed to, but they can sound different because they're actually two completely different pieces of technology. So this is the sync head. See if we hear a difference. And then I'll flip it to the repro head. Well, let's let's check it out. Let's do a little detailed listen. Sink head. I 
I like to sink head a little better. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the the material that Rob just played and I'm going to I'm going to digitize it. I'm going to just record it into Pro Tools. So right now, you know, it's only it's living on tape. It's not in any digital form at all. It's only in an analog form on here, which it could live there for the rest of its life. You could make a whole record and keep it all on tape and every part of the whole process remains there and that's what used to be done. <clears throat> but now we have a setup here on the computer where um, I'm going to, I'll run a little bit, make sure, but I'm going to just go ahead and I'm just going to print it right into the computer. Beautiful. So now we have the material from the tape uh, printed into the computer so we can compare and contrast them. Um, okay, cool. So what I've done now is I've just basically lined the two up so we can switch back and forth. So you have the, the digital side uh, recording and then you have the analog recording, which is now digital because we put it in the computer but you'll be able to hear the effects of the tape. Obviously, Rob didn't play to a click, which is fine, so they won't line up, but we'll flip back and forth. So um, the levels look, you know, they should be the same. Um, so here's, here is the digital. Here's the tape. the digital down digital tape digital tape Digital. Tape. Okay, let's go over to the groove part and actually let's do a, let's take just like the kick drum. So here's your, here's your inside kick mic for digital and here it is on tape. Oops, excuse me. Tape, digital, tape, snare on tape, snare top, snare top digitally. Snare top on tape. Let's check out something like, say, like the hi hat. He was doing like a tape. Go up to the digital. Check out the overheads digital. Check them out on tape. What I'm hearing is just more body to everything. There's more fidelity to the digital, like in the high high mids there. But like in terms of just having more body and like feel to them, it, it seems like the tape is the way to go. Yeah, definitely. Let's do one more overall, and then I'll we'll stop and. This is the digital. Tape.
Let's hear it when it, let's hear that crash. That's the crash on tape. That's the crash digitally. Yeah. I think especially when you get into like tape. Yeah, I mean, I think, so that tape machine has, it rolls off at about 15K when you're running 30 ips, which is what I was running for this, 30 inches per second. Um, and that's one of the big things, I think, you know, the, the digital has a, it's got more top end on it because it's not rolling off and the tape machine is. So I think when you have the, the treble sort of high frequency roll off, it makes you focus a little more on the everything that's not trouble. So, you know, the kick is brighter, the snare is a little brighter, the cymbals are brighter digitally than they are on tape because the machine's rolling off. And then I think, yeah, the compression aspect, like the toms, when he's doing the big tom roll stuff, uh, the tom groove, you know, you really start to feel the low end because it's it just has this sort of pumping presence to it that the digital doesn't. So I think you're right, the tape has more of a, it feels a little more alive. It feels a little more exciting and energetic. Um, and the digital doesn't, and, and I don't think there's a mammoth gap between the two. You know, I think as you can see or hear, or, or if we put this out for you in MP3 form, you know, I don't think it's like orders of magnitude more than, I mean, it's like 10% difference or something. I don't know. To me, it's not huge. It's definitely noticeable, definitely a difference, but, um, not crazy you know what i mean so but yes i think that the the tape definitely has a compression aspect that makes it fuller makes the like low mids and the low end sort of fatter and bigger but i think that's also a function of the high frequency roll off too because you're not getting as much information there so it feels more mid-rangey or more you, you notice the low end more i don't know if anybody else has a thought on any of that um but I love doing I, drums to tape, albums to tape. I'll do anything to tape. Anytime anybody wants, I love doing it. Um, we have an awesome tape machine to do it with. It just tape has gotten expensive, so it's hard to for a lot of people to justify spending a lot of money on tape <clears throat> these days. But like you told me before, um, you can get one roll of tape and do your just keep recording over and, as opposed to buying multiple reels of tape. Like you don't need a reel of tape per song. You don't. Yeah. So what you can do is sort of what we just did, which is you buy one reel of tape and then you fill it up, dump it in the computer and then record over it. And you just keep doing that, um, which is totally how most people do it. Tape is really ideal for a band that will play together, you know, so you capture the whole band uh, playing and playing the song, you know, maybe you don't maybe you do the vocals or maybe you do certain things afterwards, but you get the bulk of it. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, any project that's going to be, uh, have a whole lot of editing and all that kind of stuff probably makes less sense on tape, but, um, for just performance and capture and whatnot, it's awesome. It's great. But having said that you can do it any which way I've done it every single way under the sun. Um, anything is possible. You can even sync the, uh, Pro Tools to the tape machine with Simpty and you know, it's it's sort of endless and limitless, but it is a sound it is a difference and uh, It's worth knowing about I think and cool to experience it, you know